Color palettes are pretty simple and straightforward, but they can actually be a lot more useful than you first realize when it comes to doing certain projects, more specifically something like ArcViz. Now in this video, we're gonna set up some color palettes in Krita, and then we'll be setting them up in Blender as well. So you can kind of play around with them over there if you need to. Let's just get started. So settings, uh, conf we're gonna do settings, dockers, and there's two that you're gonna wanna utilize possibly here in Krita, and that's gonna be the palette, of course, but also the specific color selector can be quite useful. Now, if we take a look at the top right, we can see color name here. Uh, it, usually this comes in with RGB, by the way, but you can change it to HSV, which is really useful for um, being very precise when picking colors. And um, the color name, but also the hexadecimal code. So you could take this over to other software if you need to by copying this. Usually in other software, you can paste this in, you'll get the exact same color, which is really good. Okay, now below that's the palette, and at the bottom left of the palette, you can click the little icon there, and you can see we can switch to other palettes if we wanted to. Now you could click the plus sign and create your own palette here in Krita, but the problem with that is it's going to be a KPL color palette. It doesn't transfer to other software very well, okay? Not, at least not yet. Hopefully they'll change that in the future. We'll get the ability to uh, export ASC files, which is more standardized, All right? But there's some good ones in here by default, such as like Concept Cookie. There's one that I'm working on right now, which mimics traditional paints. So you have things like yellow ochre and all that fun stuff kind of set up, which will uh, come out in the future. But uh, right now, what we want to do is maybe import one. And so specifically, if you're doing like ArcViz, you might have colors that you want to use from certain paint manufacturers. So when you go to their websites, you can download their palettes, all right, their uh, swatches. So that'll usually be an ASC file. So you can import those here in Krita and Blender for that matter. And uh, so you can just go ahead and import, go to wherever you have these things saved. In my case, I'm set up over in the Photoshop section of my file archive. And uh, you can see I got Sherwin-Williams colors by number and by name here. So that's great because now if I ever had to match something uh, for ArcViz or whatever the case, I wanna do uh, some mock-ups or things like that, I can get those exact colors and I'll know I have them and I can utilize them, okay? So I've already imported those. You just double click on it, import it, and then you can use the palette selector here to uh, change to them. You can see I have all the different colors from Sharon Williams now, right? Which is quite good. And so we can put those to use here, okay? Let's go over to Blender. And in Blender, it's the same process kind of, except it's a little bit weird. Blender's palettes are kind of off and not all in. So you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, we'll do, first of all, edit preferences. And in the add-on section, you want to look for PAL. And you're going to import palettes, okay? Once you enable that by putting a check mark in the box, you can go to File. You can do Import. And you'll notice we can actually import KPL and ASE palettes, except the KPL one's broken right now. It won't actually import, causes errors, as, at least when I tried it, it did. So um, you'll probably want to use the ASE files for now. And if you import ASE files, of course, you can go back and import those Sharon Williams ones right here. And voila, they're imported. Where are they though, right? You actually have to hit tab or control tab and go into uh, texture paint mode. Press in, bring out the side panel. And we'll see over here under tool. Okay, and we scroll down a little bit. There's color palette here. So by default, I guess this one loaded up. But what you would do is click here and you'll see down here is the Sharon Williams color palette. Okay. And so now we have all the colors here as well. And I can see we're scroll forever on this one, unfortunately, this is not as uh, well managed perhaps as Krita, but uh, if we press the A key, we can minimize that if we wanted to. Okay, and uh, we press A out when we hover over it, we can open it back up if needed. All right, so, but now we can set up some materials if we wanted to, we'll probably wanna go to object mode, select whatever we're gonna work on. And so this is, uh, we can go into edit mode even, uh, or it's not edit mode, go to texture paint mode. All right, and so we might want to set up some materials. In this case, maybe we want three materials. So we could click uh, the little plus signs, new, new, right? The palette's still here. It's just kind of getting lost every time we click new. And uh, so now we can actually pick things that we might want to utilize. So maybe we want one wall color that's going to be one of these kind of like reds here. Let's do base color. We have to actually uh, use the eyedropper. We can pick it. But you can see we could do that number quite easily, it's really not that bad. Maybe we go to another um, section here. Maybe we wanna pick a different color. So in this case, maybe we want 
Maybe like this off. Uh, maybe not that one. Maybe a little bit darker. Maybe like this one here. Kind of this little orangish brown or whatever it is. And we also lose the ability to see the names of these things. I don't know if you can ever see the names. Um, so we got those two going. What else could we choose? Let's see. Maybe something a little more basic. Usually working within these color areas is nice, but kind of lost the position of the first one. So that's why using the hexadecimal codes could also be useful because this becomes quite annoying in my opinion. I'd rather just look at them in Krita and figure out which ones I want and then copy them over here with hexadecimal because you can enter hex here in Blender, the HSV or hex, right? And so let's just use like an off, um, maybe like a little bit of an off white, I think. Like a yellowish off white. Like this color here. Okay. And so we picked that one, but it's not showing up on anything. Let's put it on the actual baseboards here. Maybe the door frame as well. Who knows? Uh the door frame actually, maybe we'll make that brown. No. Now usually it's the same color, so it's like uh, the white too. But maybe we make this wall over here. I like the Let's turn this one uh, brown right here. Okay, one G brown. All right, so there we go. So now we can, um, of course, you know, set up the materials further so that we have a little bit of textures and bumps to them and all that fun stuff. That'd be nice. Uh, but the floor it might be something like a uh, wood grain floor, perhaps. So we could set that up. Something like that. Maybe it's a little glossier. Yeah, so maybe it's like a satin finish or something. So you get the idea. We can put those color palettes to use for ArcVis, potentially, right? And so you can use those, of course, on other things as well, such as the furniture. You can do color samples of furniture and then uh, set up your own palettes, potentially. This works extremely well in Photoshop, usually, uh, over in Krita because of the limitations there. You, you might have a little bit of a struggle with that one. But uh, personally, I think this is one that would look a little bit better, more, you know, a little bit oranger, like of a... Or orangey wood color, perhaps. And so, all in all, this is what you can do to kind of get your projects going a little bit more professional, like in manner. This is, I think, what kind of separates the um, the three D you look at is this these little attentions to detail. So you might want to play around with some of those uh, options available to you, anyways. So. Not too bad looking. Probably could change that color. Anyways, so you get the idea on how to utilize these things now and how you can uh, push your 3D just a tiny bit further, perhaps, uh, by being a little bit more accurate. All right. So I'll check you guys out in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll check you out in the next one. All right. Take care.